Welcome my friends, Seven Gray here. Today I'm here with Eric and Jen and I have something really special. You're gonna to get to see two vehicles of a three vehicle collection and a box truck. And I am obsessed with box trucks. On my main vlog channel, I have several box truck tours and I owned a box truck for about two months and had planned on building it out. So today I'm gonna to get a tour and I'm gonna have Eric and Jen walk through and tell us about this rig here. Hi, my name's Eric, and I'm the uh, CEO of Vortex Energy Systems. We do all kinds of geomagnetic research, looking for lost ley lines, and actually that's not true. We don't do anything like that. This is my fictitious name, uh, don't tell anybody. Vortex, this is our little recon vehicle. It's a 1986 Suzuki Samurai. It's awesome for just going out in the dirt here like we are in Arizona. I equipped it with all the goofy stuff. We've got the emergency response light, but this is just a perfect little vehicle to tow behind my box truck. Hi, my name is Gypsy Jenjen, and I have the third vehicle. Right now, it's in Laguna Beach, California. We did not take them both out here. It's a Ford E350 high top conversion, and it matches all these vehicles. They have the same logos on it, and it's kind of like a set, and it's really cool. So this is the mothership of the Vortex Energy System fleet. Uh, we call them all research vehicles. This is a 2000 E350 10-foot box truck. I was looking specifically for a 10-foot because the overall length is 19 feet. I can park it in any legal parking spot. I looked for a few specific things before I bought a truck. I wanted to make sure it had the air deflector for mileage and storage overhead. You'll see in the back that I have the barn doors as opposed to the roll-up door. That was really important to me as well. And of course, for the 10-foot box, you only need the single wheel and back. So suspension and fuel mileage and everything else is a big plus. T box trucks work great for build-outs. I'll show you a few things that I did. The box trucks are available in the single wheel rear in a 10 or 12. Once you get bigger than that, you're like the U-Haul or work trucks, and they have the, the dually wheels and back, and that's going to cut way down on your fuel economy and just the ride of it. So this worked great for me. I've had it two years, put about 40,000 miles on it, traveled all over the Western United States, and it's running like a champ. So to make sure that our Vortex Energy charade is complete, we have the hard hat and the vest. I've never worn either of those. Somebody said they need to be dirtier to be convincing. And then even went so far as to put the little blinky amber lights up on top of the deflector there for our emergency responses. Some people ask what we really do at Vortex Energy Systems. They don't believe it's a fake company. You're right. We build flux capacitors, but I keep this one hidden because I don't want anybody to steal it. So like I said, uh, the barn doors, or some people call them ambulance doors, were really important to me, mainly because with the roll-up door, you have a lot of hardware that drops the ceiling just to allow for that door to roll up and down. They're not as common for sure, but if you look for a box truck, I think you'd be happy if you can find one with the barn doors. Go ahead and open it up for you. I tried to make a, a little apartment as much as I could, cozy and but functional just the same. I hadn't watched very many van builds when I built mine and I just wanted it to be colorful and bright and kind of look like a 70s gypsy wagon, something like that. Uh, when I built Jen's, we did it mostly white, but for mine, I love turquoise and it was just gonna be full of color. Let's come on in. So uh, just starting going around the whole truck, I put a, a TV and a DVD player in last minute just because the wall space was vertical and there was a lot of wall space to work with. So I have a fireplace or a, a aquarium going on just for silliness, but it's nice to have on cold nights or whatever to be able to play a DVD when you're off grid and can't get a signal. My sink, I did everything as, as easy as I could as far as holding tanks and whatnot. I have watched a lot of videos where people get really over the top in their electronics and their holding tanks and their uh, the systems get very complicated. I wanted mine to be almost like tent camping, but in a box. So I have a two and a half gallon container, the kind you just buy in the store. I cut a hole in it, run a hose down, and then this is just a manually pumping sink. The tank is not in there right now. And it drains all of my sinks. I have two in here and a shower box. They drain into one collector. If I'm someplace where I need to collect water, I just have a collapsible five gallon jug. But if I'm out in the desert, it doesn't matter. I use biodegradable soap. It just goes right into the ground. 
So down here I put in, this is not a real fridge. I am not a full-time van lifer and I just have like a little 12 volt trucker's cooler. It'll cool down about 35 degrees colder than whatever the ambient temperature is outside. Got my trash can here. The water tank that I was telling you about stows behind the, the trash can. These cabinets and this countertop, I just bought at Home Depot. That is another beauty of the 90 degree box truck design. Very easy to insulate and really easy to put up plywood. That became my substrate for mounting all the hardware and cabinetry. So this is half inch birch plywood covering an inch and a half of insulation. And that's over a half inch of the superior box truck um, building material. It adds a lot of insulation to it, works out really good. All my cabinets the same way are just stock hang it yourself cabinets. I just screwed them this way into the wall and up into the ceiling. The countertop is a regular countertop height and depth. I wanted it to feel like a real kitchen. I store uh, a portable stove that I just use inside or outside. I wanted as much counter space as I could get without taking it up with a permanently mounted stove. So forward here, I bought a 36 inch tall by 18 cabinet from Home Depot. It's the three door option. So that was pre-built. And then I just finished it all the way up to create a hanging locker there. Lots of storage. This is the benefit of the overhead wind deflector. Lots of storage. I keep four chairs. I keep my floor mats that I use outside, my heater, my propane, a shower, others. I keep a ukulele up here, just tons of storage. And then there's ventilation and uh, light that comes through this access door to the forward cab. A lot of people, when they imagine box truck and they see it from the outside and know that I'm camping in it, like, oh my God, I would have to have windows. There's no light. Well, when I'm usually in the truck, the weather's okay enough to leave the entire backside of the truck open. I have two ventilation hatches in the ceiling, provide a lot of light and air. I have a max air fan. And then even up forward here, this opens up for ventilation and light as well. It's full of all the stuff that I don't keep in here, but I, I never feel like I'm totally cooped up in here. And at night, we all want to be enclosed in. That's when you close the drapes and the blinds and everything else, people not looking in. And for me, I never feel cramped or cooped up in here at all. So even though I only have a 10 foot box, the first thing that I knew I was going to put in it is a bathroom, an enclosed private area uh, that I could take a shower in. And so in order to make it deep enough for me, once you're in there, I had to build out a little bit, which does limit the space here. But Usually I'm here from cooking or whatnot. It's, it's not tight at all and for getting clothes and whatnot. It's fine. I did a bifold door here so it can fold away easily and it's more or less a full little wet bath. It, I do a foot pump shower in here. It has its own vanity. I have a porta potty. I could put a composting toilet in it if I was to start living in here, but that was never my plan. So a porta potty with a five gallon cassette is fine for me. I can make that last almost two weeks. So on this side, I have another Home Depot cabinet, 36 by 18. This is my organized junk drawer. It's my junk drawer and it's like the most organized thing I have in the whole truck. And then uh, a cabinet underneath. It's, this is kind of my flex space. I can put a generator in there if I'm gone longer or other bags, water, if I need more water for the trip. I just use those two and a half gallon rectangular uh, containers. So I can carry 10 of those rectangular uh, containers and that gives me 25 gallons of fresh water. I actually like it. I grew up in the boat industry and you know the water tanks start getting a little murky and, and yucky anyway. So if you're just replacing the tank itself, you've always got really fresh water. So this is the sofa bed arrangement that I created. I had seen a couple videos with the pull-out slat beds, but I wanted to be able to access my storage from the top or the front, and I'll show you what I did instead. So it's a quick conversion, at least it feels quick to me. Take this, 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 that, and that. So that's one side. And that can be either like a bigger lounge for watching TV and still allow access through the truck, or I would reverse it on both sides and have an east-west bed arrangement. The width of the truck is 75 inches tall, which is six foot three. 
I'm five foot ten, so I have plenty of room to lay across here, and it's almost a full bed. I think it's 51 inches across this way. So it's plenty big enough for me and all that I need. For storage, I take the cushions completely off. And then this folds up this way, and I have access to another stove, a lot of outdoor lighting, power tools, um, tent pegs, tape, zip ties, cordage. It's all stores on this side. In my electrical and storage for my fold-up table that I use, all goes on this side. So keeping in the theme of trying to keep it as house or apartment-y looking as I could, I did drapes. I did drapes forward and I did drapes back. And once you're in here, it feels like a micro, micro, micro home. The drapes also provide a, uh, a function that they keep a lot of the cold air out. If it's cold outside, since I couldn't do any insulation on the doors, this kind of traps that cold air barrier and really helps keep the cold off of this side of the truck. And then if I open them up, you know, you can swag them or, or whatever, but it just gives it that gypsy wagon look that I was looking for. Thank you, Eric and Jen, for the tour here of the Vortex Energy Systems. I love the setup here and seeing two of the three vehicles. Hopefully I can connect sometime in the future, Jen, and see your vehicle and check out the van. I think that would be really fun. Mm -hmm. I built her van as well. It's a different look. It was actually more challenging cutting in all the curves on the Ford van high top, but it came out real good. So maybe check out Jen's channel, Gypsy Jen Jen, on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Yep, so I'm going to put uh, links down below in the description and at the end of this video. So please check them out. Thank you so much for watching and thanks for joining us for this tour today. Please savor the moment and I'll see you in a future video.